Welcome to Electron Online. In order to understand the Kalman filter better, let's take a look at this diagram because this diagram gives you a good feel, a good picture of what actually goes on through the process of actually conducting Kalman filtering. So there are three main equations or three main calculations that need to be done. One, we need to calculate the Kalman gain and of course these three equations, these three um, calculations are iterative. They have to happen over and over and over again for the estimate to zoom in to the actual correct value. So we need to each time calculate the common gain or simply sometimes called the gain. Secondly, we have to calculate the current estimate. So each time we're going to update the estimate. So that is the current estimate that's going to be recalculated. And finally, we have to recalculate the new error in the estimate. So each estimate comes with a predicted amount of error. I don't like to use the word error, I, I rather use the word uncertainty, but in lots of uh, literature on Kalman uh, filtering, you'll see the word error instead, uncertainty. So we'll just go ahead with error, but like keep in mind, I think of it more in terms of uncertainty, the uncertainty in the error, the uncertainty in the measurement. All right, so three calculations, calculating the gain, calculating the updated estimate, and calculating the new error or uncertainty in that estimate and this will get done over and over and over again. So what do we need in order to calculate the gain? Two things that we need. One, we need to know the error in the estimate. Of course that would be the previous error or in some cases the original error, right? We always start out with an original error. Once we have the original error put into our system, we never go back to that. We then keep recalculating the error. Notice that each time we recalculate the error, in the estimate that comes back up here and refeeds the calculation of the Kalman gain. So we need the error in the estimate and we also need the error in the data input because we're going to get regular data inputs. Notice here we're going to get continuous data inputs each time a data input comes in. We need to understand the uncertainty or the error in that data input. Both of these feed into the calculation and come up with the gain. Really what the gain does, it puts a relative importance in the error in the estimate versus the error in the data. If the error in the estimate is smaller, we put more importance in it. If the error in the data is small, we put more importance in that. So what feeds the ultimate recalculation will depend upon how much we can trust in the estimate and in the data, how big those errors are. In the next video, I'll show you some more detail of how that really works. How does the Kalman gain take care of the relative uh, error in the estimate and relative error in the data? Secondly, the Kalman gain feeds then into the calculation of the current estimate. Depending upon what the gain is, the adjustment to the previous estimate to come up with a new estimate depends, of course, upon the gain. But besides the gain, it also depends upon the previous estimate. So that means that whatever we calculate now, on the next iteration, when the new data comes in, we'll have to then use that previous estimate, then recalculate the, then the new estimate. So that always feeds back in on itself. So we need the previous estimate, the one that we calculated before. And if it's the first time through, of course, then we take the original estimate. In the Kalman filter, amazingly enough, it really doesn't matter what the original estimate is. We can always put in any random value and the Kalman filter very quickly zeroes in on the true value. So besides the previous estimate, we also need the data input. So we get the data input, we, need, we get the previous estimate, and then the gain will decide how much weight to put in on the new measured value or on the previous estimate. So you'll see how that works later, but that's what the gain does. It puts relative importance in those two values and either we'll use this more to come up with the new estimate or we'll use this more to come up with the new estimate. It will use both values, but the relative ranking or, or importance will be determined by the gain. So once we have done calculated the current estimate, we then want to calculate the error in the estimate to be used the next time around because the previous error was used here to come in with the gain, so we feed that new error back in. What do we need to know to come up with the new error? Well, we need to know the current estimate and we need to know the gain. Based upon the current estimate and the gain, we'll come up with a new error in the estimate that will then get fed in the next time we go around. Each time we go through the iterative process, something comes out, a result comes out that then gets used to update what we're looking for. If we want to track satellites, we'll get a better feel or a better reading on where those are at and how fast they're moving. If we're tracking a, a fighter plane and a, and a fighter jet, 
and our radar tries to lock into that plane, we'll get a better feel for where that is at and how fast that plane is moving. If we're trying to get a better feel for a reading, the temperature, the height of an object or something like that, we get an update to the estimate and so this keeps on getting fed and this value then we we'll should get, if everything works right, should get us closer and closer and closer to the true value. And that's how the Kalman filter works. So here you have a nice little diagram that shows you how the Kalman filter works. Once you understand this and then you look at the equations, it becomes a lot easier to figure out what the Kalman filter does. And that's how we know.